If I was an AI, would you want to know? And would you want to have a right to know? First things first, I'm not an AI. I'm a journalist made of flesh and bones. But as artificial intelligence is reshaping society, experts say it's time to come up with rules for the technology. Rules for issues such as, should we have a right to know when we interact with an AI system? And behind the scenes, a fight is raging over what those rules should look like, involving powerful stakeholders, each advocating for their own vision. In this video, we'll hear from both sides of the debate. From those arguing that tough rules are needed and fast. There's not a lot of time to waste because people and communities are already harmed. To those who warn that too much regulation could backfire. We need to make sure that we don't overregulate right now because that will hinder innovation. And we'll meet a lawmaker in charge of writing those rules. It's a big responsibility. All of that is to understand how we can and how we should regulate artificial intelligence. Whenever computers do jobs that previously required human intelligence, we speak of artificial intelligence. And AI has already become a part of our world in various forms. From the algorithms that decide what we see on social media, to programs we use to generate text or images, to software that helps doctors to spot cancer in x-rays. That technology can help make our lives easier and safer, but it can also be used to supercharge disinformation online or enable surveillance on an unprecedented scale. That's why lawmakers from the US to China are looking into how to regulate artificial intelligence and the most comprehensive efforts are underway here in Europe. As early as 2018, the European Union set up a group of experts to come up with ideas for what AI rules could look like. Five years and numerous documents later, lawmakers are now debating the fine print. And when you talk to those developing AI technology, many are worried about how far those in charge will go. Right now, there are more people talking about regulation than people actually building applications. And I think that's a big problem in Europe. I'm Rasmus Rote. I'm the co-founder of Merantix. Uh, we are building AI companies here in Europe in Berlin. My personal background is actually in AI research. So I was a scientist before. There saw this potential of AI. And now I, I turn that into companies. This is the AI campus in Berlin. It's the largest co-working space for AI in Europe. We came up with the idea two years ago to create one place where basically all the stakeholders working on AI come together and work together. For example, we have Vara that are working on breast cancer screening, um, so using AI to help radiologists to do a better job. The software helps doctors detect early signs of cancer in x-rays they might have missed otherwise. AI technology like that will change every aspect of our lives, Rasmus says, and he's advocating for its development on several fronts. I'm actually one of the uh, co-founding board members of the German AI Association. And we have around 400 member companies. The AI industry is still relatively new in, in Germany and Europe, and we are basically the voice for those companies. AI is never good or bad. The same algorithm can be used to do cyber warfare as well as do cancer detection. So it's all about what is the use case the AI is used for and who is using it. I think there's a danger right now that in the short term we are over-regulating a lot of really good use cases. And overburdening rules will hit startups like his particularly hard, Rasmus says. A lot of the innovation comes from small startups, and so the more regulation we put, the lesser innovation we will see from these small companies. Rasmus Rote isn't the only one who thinks like that. We spoke to several other European entrepreneurs who expressed similar concerns. But while there's no doubt that the opportunities of AI are vast, so are the risks. And when you talk to digital rights advocates, they will tell you that we need tough rules to mitigate those risks. There are millions of people who are already suffering and, uh, and that's why we need rules. My name is Fanny Hidvegi and I'm a human rights lawyer. I'm the Europe Policy and Advocacy Director at Access Now. I'm a recovering lawyer. I really hated myself for going to law school but I found my calling in the human rights world and, and protecting digital rights in civil society. We started to work on artificial intelligence around 2016-2017. 
In 2018, Fanny was made a member of the EU's AI expert group. Since then, she's been lobbying for strict rules, often against the interests of governments and industry. It's an uphill battle. We are at the Computers Privacy and Data Protection Conference, which is uh, one of the most important events in Brussels about privacy and data protection. <laughs> it's, a, it's a funny mix of seeing uh, the Commission and the tech companies as the highest uh, sponsors. Access Now is a moral supporter down there. It also shows the, the power imbalance, you know, because civil society, <laughs> We are somewhere, somewhere down there. And well, the EU institution is here, surrounded with all the tech companies. In the debate over rules for AI, she says, fundamental rights often take second place. And that worries her. Artificial intelligence, machine learning, and all these, let's say, complex, uh, complex algorithms and data sets replicate the biases that we humans have. AI systems used in recruitment, for example, have been shown to be biased against women. Facial recognition technology has been proven to be less accurate for people of color, with people being arrested for crimes they never committed. And algorithms used by public authorities have wrongly accused thousands of families of welfare fraud. The violations and the harms are already happening and there's not much time to, to waste. Startup founder Rasmus Rote in Berlin and digital rights activist Fanny Hidwegi in Brussels represent the two major camps in the debate. On the one side you have those who argue that too much regulation could kill innovation. And on the other side, those who say that protecting fundamental rights should always come first. Now, both have a point, no? So, how do you strike the right balance? That's the job of lawmakers. And here in Europe, it falls mostly to the European Union. We are trying to influence the debate all over the world, not just in Europe. My name is Brando Benifei. I am a member of European Parliament since 2014 and I am presently the co-rapporteur of the European AI Act. Along with a colleague, Brando Benifei is leading the negotiations with other institutions in Brussels and governments across Europe. We have tried to bridge these two approaches, pro-fundamental rights and protections, and on the other hand, the need to sustain innovation and development of AI in Europe. The key idea is to regulate AI systems according to the level of risk they pose to the safety or fundamental rights of users. When those risks are minimal or limited, for example, when AI is used to filter emails for spam, only few rules apply. That's different for high-risk applications, which can have life-changing consequences. For example, to help decide which students qualify for higher education. These need to comply with much stricter obligations. Whenever AI systems pose unacceptable risks, they are completely banned. In the EU, those bans will likely include the social credit systems used by authorities in China to rank citizens according to their behavior. And lawmakers in Brussels hope that these rules will become a kind of blueprint for other democracies. We uh, see that there is an ongoing debate on AI and the possible rules on AI. Uh, and it's a bit um, behind the one in Europe because they are often discussing what we have been discussing some years ago. We see how much we can influence this legislation and we want uh, uh, this to happen. So what do entrepreneur Rasmus Rote and digital rights activist Fanny Hidwegi think about what lawmakers are coming up with? This is a very industry-friendly and innovation-oriented approach. So from the outset, we are not happy with the structure of the AI Act. But within that framing, we are supportive of the law as it is now. It recognizes that there are areas of applications or AI systems that should never be in place. It seems right now that this AI regulation will create a lot of uncertainty. And uncertainty is the worst for innovation. It's not a lot 
or little regulation. It's not that I'm against regulation, but it needs to be super clear. And the way the regulation is phrased right now, it leaves a lot of question open. And what about the question we raised at the beginning of this video? Should we have a right to know if and when we're interacting with AI? It's a good question. I don't actually know. I think, I think, I think it's totally fine to like d disclose this. Like I think, if I think about our applications, also companies of, of friends, I think there's no problem in disclosing that. Um, why should we hide it? Yes, we should know when we interact with an AI system. Yes, we want to make it transparent when you are uh, talking or interacting with an AI. So there is room for consensus, at least among the three people we heard from. In other areas, it will be harder to find common ground because coming up with regulations that both foster innovation and protect fundamental rights is a balancing act. But it's possible and it's important to have this debate because we want to make sure we can reap the benefits of AI technology while also making sure that it's put to good use.